The most shocking financial market impacting event this week was, no, not the electoral chaos in the United States. It was the news that the Chinese government decided they had to step on an ant, specifically on ant. That is the ant group, formerly known as Ant Financial Services. Days before Ant's huge arranged public offering in Shanghai and Hong Kong, Chinese governor summoned the company's founder, Jack Ma, to Beijing for a bit of re-education. Hello everyone, welcome to World of China, a channel to explore China. In today's video, we are talking about China's Ant Financial Group, which is causing acute students' debt. So stay tuned and give this video a big thumbs up. Social media sites are abuzz with comments about the Chinese government's latest move to control online loans to university students. One post on Weibo about Huawei and Jibei, two consumer credit services offered on Ant Group's Alipay platform, attracted 900 million clicks and spawned 40,000 discussions. That resulted in a regulatory crackdown on net student loans deemed to tempt students to borrow more than they can afford. Under the new rules, so-called micro-credit firms and unlicensed online vendors are banned from extending consumer loans to college students. Moreover, mainstream financial institutions such as consumer finance companies and commercial banks are required to strengthen their lending risk management, according to a statement from the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission. China has more than 40 million college students and mainly have no access to mainstream credit cards. So, they turn to online lenders for money. Alan Wang, a third-year student at Shanghai Lixin University of Accounting and Finance, said it's high time something was done about the student loan realm, which he called a kind of crime. Wang said he has seen too many classmates who have developed absurd spending habits and fallen into crippling debt because of the easy money available online. The buy-now-pay-later lifestyle isn't just about financing their education. Many students buy expensive shoes, bags, and other non-essentials. Their lenient lifestyle is fed by online credit services like Wabe, also known as Ant Check Later, and Bai Chow, a virtual credit card service of e-commerce giant JD.com. These services give consumers generous spending limits and require repayment at a specified date, usually in the following month. What is an ant exactly? This is a question most of the viewers must be asking now. Well, the word exactly doesn't really apply. The Ant Group, which till this summer was called Ant Financial Services, has quite suddenly come to dominate China's huge potential market for consumer finance. Ant today processes more financial payments than any other company in the world. It runs the largest mobile payment platform. It runs the largest money market fund in the world. It's the largest fintech company in the world. It's worth far more than any of China's big four state-owned banks, or it would have been had the IPO gone forward. Indeed, estimates of Ant's pre-offering valuation set it above JP Morgan Chase, the world's most valuable actual bank. Ant was thought to represent the future of banking, insurance, investment, the future of consumer finance in all its aspects, from mutual funds and money market accounts to digital currency and credit scoring. Certainly, so futuristic was its business model that the idea of a minor bank seemed suddenly obsolescent and at risk. Even Western giants like Citibank and JP Morgan suddenly looked like dinosaurs, vulnerable to the new species of companies like Ant, armed with fintech. Ant was poised to surpass them all in market value. The aura of success was manifest. Investors were already reeling. Ant shares rose 50% in the gray market in the run-up to the offering itself. But the Ant phenomenon emerged much larger than these numbers show. The IPO itself was shaping up as a catalyst for a much larger financial earthquake. The offering was overscribed 870 times, $2.8 trillion of orders just from retail investors in mainland China. Ant Group, which began as a payment service for the e-commerce platform Alibaba, was a pioneer in the Chinese micro-lending sector, launching Huawei in 2014 as a way to offer online shoppers access to credit, although it's far from the only player. Hundreds of fintech apps and services are available to Chinese consumers, typically allowing small-scale loans of a few hundred dollars that can be approved and paid in minutes. Initially, the fintech companies lent their own money, but over the past few years, many have turned away from being direct providers of financial products and instead have become platforms for traditional banks and fund managers. Rather than issuing loans to consumers themselves, the fintech act as brokers, using their own comprehensive internal data to assess a customer's credit risk, 
and then passing that information onto a bank which underwrites the loan. Huabei, which literally means just spend in Chinese, was originally created in 2014 as a way for Alipay users to fund purchases on shopping websites like Taobao and Tmall, all run by the giant Alibaba group. In addition to the buy this month, pay next month seduction and 40-day interest-free period, Huabei also introduced an installment allowing consumers to repay in 3, 6, 9, or 12-month installments. By lending very small amounts to new borrowers initially and then increasing their credit limits, the micro-lending business has quietly expanded into China's largest digital consumer credit service. Ant Group has called Huabei and Jibei the most widely used consumer credit products in China. Huabei is provided by Chongqing Ant Small and Micro Loan Company. Jibei is offered through Chongqing and Shangcheng Microloan Company. During the 12 months ended June 2020, Ant Group reported credit balances for about 500 million users, according to documents filed with the Shanghai and Hong Kong stock exchanges. A typical Huawei customer is young and internet savvy, with an affection to spend. Ant describes the service as inclusive, convenient, and helps in building a credit history. A student named Wang said, most of his classmates have applied for credit via Huabei. He himself was pulled into the service by offers of discounts and interest-free installment payments. There is a problem though. Once you have opened an account with Huabei, it's easy to forget you're spending other people's money until the bill comes, Wang told. For borrowers who don't pay up on schedule, online lenders slap on high interest rates and other fees. Huabei's credit cutting plan aims to resolve Chinese regulators' concern over young and low-income borrowers' debt loop. A 2018 survey in China by Rong360 showed that around half of respondents who took out consumer loans were born after 1990. Last month, Chinese officials published a consultation paper on tightening rules for micro-lending platforms in which it requires lending platforms to jointly fund at least 30% of any loan they make with banks. According to Ant Group's IPO prospectus, only 2% of the loans it had facilitated were on its balance sheet by the end of June. Ant Group's credit businesses had loan balances of 2.1 trillion yuan or $321.25 billion, in which 1.7 trillion yuan was consumer credit. That compares to 8.1 trillion yuan of short-term consumer loans issued by Chinese banks. It's assumed that students defaulted during the pandemic, unable to earn money from their part-time jobs. Debt started to snowball when they made new loans to pay back old ones. Hong Xiao-based Shen told the press that as a student with no formal income, he had been granted a credit line of about 20,000 RMB or 3,075 US dollars to 30,000 RMB or 4,612 US dollars on each internet platform. JD.com was pushing coupons to him each week to market the Buy Chow Buy Now Pay Later service. He said that Michuan, Jiquan, Alipay via Huawei and Jibei, and even Xiaomi Finance advertised online loan services to him. Postgraduate student Chow, 24 years old, found that she could still borrow 5,000 RMB at Huabei to pay for goods bought on Alibaba's Taobao and 16,000 RMB from Meichuan as a direct cash loan at a time when the ban has already been active. Comparatively, the interest rate on Huabei loans is not high. In the 12 months ended June 30th, the daily interest rate for the majority of Huabei users was at or below 0.04%, and group reported. However, the online lender reportedly began lowering the credit limits for young borrowers at the end of last year. Wu Xin, a sophomore at Beijing Information Science and Technology University, recently found that her Huawei account limit was reduced to 2,000 yuan from 2,500 yuan. Generally, the limit provides enough money for me, plus the living expenses my parents give to me, she told. She said she used Huawei mainly to pay for food deliveries, cosmetics and clothes, and she insisted she will make repayments on time every month. The problem of excessive loans to students has been going on for a long time, with new government measures designed to control it rolled out from time to time over the past few years. Late last year, national regulators initiated a crackdown on Ant and other online non-bank financial services. Many online lenders have reinvented their images, while others claim that they don't offer student loans. WeBank, China's first private and digital-only bank, told that its loan service Weilidai, which provides small credit loans, hasn't been available to college students under the age of 23 since its launch in 2015. Registered users aged 18 to 55 
can apply for an account with you money with their ID card and bank card, according to the information posted on the company's website. The webpage said that the product was not available to students. However, it's difficult for online lenders to identify whether applicants are students or not, Industry Insider said, noting that scrutiny can be pretty careless. Home Credit, a licensed consumer finance firm, said it stopped lending to students as early as 2013 but does find many users covering their student status. China has put a strong emphasis on building a social credit system since the state council issued a guideline in 2014 and has established the world's largest credit system in 2019. The system creates credit files for almost all people and enterprises involved in credit activities nationwide in a uniform format, being used as a tool in preventing financial risks and ensuring financial stability. Concerns bundled up among users after the changes were made on the Huawei platform, leaving some of them worried about its impact on their loan applications from banks. Huawei said this will not happen if the platform is used under normal circumstances with proper usage and on-time repayments by users, adding that data indicates more than 99% of its users have good usage records. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, then give this video a big thumbs up and share it. For more exciting videos, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. I'll be back with another exciting video soon. Till then, check out our channel for more exciting videos and stay tuned.